Hey everyone, thanks for coming to our session. Um, this session, we will continue to talk about the Buddhist meditation on impotence. Um, in the past, we have covered um, the three sessions, the importance of realizing emptiness. The second one is the uh, stages of realization of emptiness. The third one is realizing emptiness through recognizing the nature of mind. Um, in this session, uh, we'll cover Nagarjuna and the thief and the true nature of mind. So this session will cover below items. The first one, as usual, we will have um, introduction to Larunga Buddhist Academy and the Kempo Sudagi. And I will share Campbell Sutagi's talk on Nagarjuna and the thief, also the true nature of mind. And then we'll go over the important points from Campbell's teaching and followed by Q and A. Larunga Buddhist Academy uh, was established on 1980. It was founded by His Holiness Jimmy Ponsor Rinpoche. Um, it is located in China, Sichuan province. Since then, it starts to become one of the largest and most influential centers for the study of Tibetan Buddhism in the world. As you can see in this picture, a lot of red cabins, um, which is where the practitioners live. So in peak time, um, there are more than 10,000 practitioners live there, full-time study Buddhism. Um, this is the Grand Sutra Hall um, located in Academy. Um, in there, uh, the practitioners um, study Mahayana, Sutrayana, and Vajrayana. This picture um, is practitioners doing the prostrations. So prostration, um, as you can see um, in the Tibetan, you know, some documentary, uh, also the um, Buddhism practice, it is very common. Um, actually, when you see the, like the routine looks like very simple, um, but there is a, a deep meaning underneath. It is required um, in preliminary practice of great perfection as well. Um, with the meditation, like a sit, formal seated meditation, um, actually this combined together, it can uh, quickly open your chakras and um, let you um, unblock your blocking area of your body. and um, it's very um, beneficial for your mind and body. Kampo Sudagi is one of the spiritual leaders in Nima lineage. As a Vajra Guru and a Dzogchen lineage holder, Kampo is empowered um, to transmit Vajrayana teachings and practice from Tibetan to Chinese. And he translated um, a few hundred books um, already. And um, he emphasizes a systematic approach of listening, contemplating, and meditation on the Dharma. And he has been teaching over 30 years. We are here a group of practitioners um, which follow Campbell's teaching. Um, if you are interested, Campbell also has a lot of uh, teachings on the um, below link. Uh, which is campusdagi.org. Um, please check it out. Um, you will find a lot of uh, precious teachings there. So Tibetan Buddhism lays much emphasis on lineage transmission that has been passed on till today from Buddha to our teachers. It carries great power continuously and without interruption. Without receiving such transmission, 
one is not allowed to teach others, however wise and skilled he might be. This is very unique um, in Tibetan Buddhism. Um, this is our transmission chart. Um, I have covered this chart in um, other uh, videos as well. So our lineage is Nima lineage. Um, from Buddha Sakamuni, uh, the teachings it transmitted all the way down to um, Longchen Rajam and to um, Pachu Rinpoche and Mepo Rinpoche and the Kampo Jame Ponto and Kampo Sodagi, also Kampo Sotran Lodru. Um, in the left side, Kampo Jame Ponto um, transmitted the teachings to Kampo Sodagi and uh, Kampo Sotran Lodru. These two Kampos um, are very famous um, in Western um, world uh, because they have been um, traveled to um, like the US, Canada for a few times, um, give a lot of uh, public speech. Um, so you can find a lot of teachings um, in YouTube as well. In the left side, um, Longqing Rajan, the master, um, he's very, very famous Dzogchen master and uh, has a lot of um, precious teachings. Um, for here, in YouTube, we have um, a series of um, launching Nintik Nodal Meditation. Um, this is the other of preliminary practice instructions of finding comfort and ease in the nature of mind. So the Longchen Nintik Meditation series are uh, coming from this um, book. So if you're interested, um, you can check it out in our YouTube channel. And um, um, coming down, Pachu um, it's the author of the word of my perfect teacher. Uh, we also offer uh, online weekly teachings about this book. Um, they are preliminaries for great perfection. Both teachings are interpreted by Kampo Sodagi. Um, if you are interested, you can check it out. So um, next, I would like to um, announce a new book, uh, The Son of Victory. The Son of Victory is an exemporaneous Vajra Doha son by His Holiness Dimen Ponzo Rinpoche, in which His Holiness addressed four pith, which is the non-dual wisdom in a context of Mahayana and Vajrayana teachings, and the bodhicitta, renunciation, and uh, virtuous personality. These four pith are the essence of all 84,000 Dharma teachings being summarized uh, through his holiness, theoretical study and personal realization. It's of great importance for all of us who aspire to follow the Dharma, to chant this text, to realize our aspirations and overcome all the obstacles we encounter. If you are interested, um, please check out um, from the website. Um, from Kampo Sudagi, this short text contained the essence of all the Sutrayana and Tantrayana teachings, as well as the very profound pith instructions of His Holiness lifetime of practice. Next, we will continue um, with the um, emptiness um, sharing. From Kampo Sutagi, no matter whether you believe Buddhism or not, it is important for you to know the nature of your mind. The myriad of suffering experienced by human beings are rooted in ignorance of this nature. The two methods to realize the nature of mind are analytical meditation and stabilizing meditation. 
Next, um, we will talk about the Nagarjuna and the thief. Before I share campus teaching, I would like to um, introduce Nagarjuna. Nagarjuna is one of the six great commentators, also called the six ornaments on the Buddhist teachings. The great scholar Nagarjuna is revealed as an unsurpassed master by all Buddhist schools. His teachings provide the foundation for the Mahayamaka school, which propounded the midway philosophy, accepted as the highest view within the Sutrayana. He was also the revealer of the Pajanapamita Sutras, which is the core teaching of the second turning of the wheels of Dharma. He's also counted among the 84 Mahasiddhas and among the eight Vidyadharas. And uh, Nakajuna has the very um, famous book, which is the fundamental wisdom of the midway. His greatest philosophical work, the Mulam Madhyamika Karika, read and studied by philosophers in all major Buddhist schools of Tibet, China, Japan, and Korea, is one of the most influential work in the history of Indian philosophy. Nagarjuna developed his uh, doctrine that all phenomena are empty of inherent existence, that is, that nothing exists substantially or independently. Despite lacking any essence, he argues, phenomena nonetheless exist conventionally, and that indeed conventional existence and ultimate emptiness are in fact the same thing. This represents the radical understanding of the Buddhist doctrine of the true truth or two levels of reality. Actually, um, I'm in the um, um, study of this book um, for almost like a year and a half. Um, I find um, the wisdom of Nagarjuna, it's, it's really, really high, impressed, and um, uh, suggest um, anyone interested, um, please, um, please read this book. So um, now I'm going to share campus teaching. So campus teaching is um, the public speech in Temple University, uh, which is um, at um, 2014, when the time Campbell um, visited US. So campus teaching is in Tibetan. So I will pass uh, campus teaching and uh, directly go to translation. On the subject of identifying one's nature and the importance of it, I have a story to share with you, a true story, um, which is uh, about one of the um, one of the amazing. Uh, occurrences in the life of the great Indian master Nagarjuna, who was a fully ordained monk. And of course, they would go out and beg for alms for the midday meal. And at one point, uh, at one point, one woman approached him and offered Nagarjuna a golden receptacle cup, which is studded with beautiful jewels, precious authentic jewels all around it to use for his begging bowl. Actually, in truth, monks are not supposed to receive or use these kinds of valuable objects, but because Nagarjuna has no fixation or desire, he readily took it as though it was just something ordinary. Um, and so he begged for alms that day using that receptacle. And there was one thief in the vicinity who saw this cup in his hand 
And the Sneed thought, oh, this is really amazing. And he began to follow him, stalking him. And after Narajuna had completed his lunch, then, omnisciently knowing what the thief was thinking, he actually gave the thief the cup. Now, the thief was incredibly shocked by this, as you can imagine. And um, he was so shocked that he couldn't contain himself. And so he had to ask the master, why would you give me such a precious thing? He just couldn't believe that this, is, this had happened. Why would you possibly give me this beautiful, valuable thing? You don't even know me. And Nagarjuna replied to him, for me, this is not at all valuable, valuable in comparison with um, what is of much greater value that I possess and that I cherish more than anything. And the thief said, well, what could that be? What could you be cherishing more than something as valuable as this cup? And that was when Nagarjuna told him about the preciousness of knowing one's own mind's nature. And he must have given him some pointing out instructions right on the spot. And so with that, the thief was very taken aback and um, thought that that was also amazing and believed him. And um, he asked Nagarjuna, well, what should I do then uh, with this information? Is there some way I can use this in, in terms of my life? And um, Nagarjuna told him, well, you just go now and whenever you have the urge to steal, apply what I've just told you. Watch to see the nature of the mind, the empty nature of the mind. Whenever you have the urge to steal, just do that. And so he said, okay, and he went off. And so for some 15 days, he did like this. Eventually he came back to the master and he said, um, oh, this was really uh, something that caused difficulties to my vocation of stealing. Because every time I had the thought to steal and then I watched the empty nature of mine, I just forgot about stealing. I was unable to do it. And so this is what he had to report. And so Nagarjuna said, well, then forget it. You shouldn't do this. You just go back to stealing. And he said, no, no, no. I can't go back to stealing because for the last 15 days, I have experienced the most blissful joy and happiness that was never even glimpsed by myself in this lifetime. It's been the most peaceful, happy time of my life. And so that was when he formally became a disciple of Nagarjuna and in fact came to be one of the best disciples gave up all of his bad habits and turned his mind completely to uh, understanding the meaning of dharma. And so this is a true account from ancient times, but it does symbolize the point of what I'm trying to make to you. And I hope that it is, is helpful to you and you can apply that to your own minds. So um, Kambu covered um, the story of um, Nagarjuna and the thief. And um, um, basically um, in the story, um, Nagarjuna had a, a very precious cup and then he gave the cup to the thief. Um, and the thief was surprised uh, why he gave uh, this so precious cup. And he said, compare with the um, something he preserved is much more valuable. And um, the thief is asked what it was. And um, Nagarjuna told him it was the preciousness of knowing the nature of mind. And he gave the thief some instructions um, and to practice. And then what is the instruction? The instruction said, um, every time you want to steal, um, and you can turn back and to watch to see the nature of the mind. So basically is every time you have the thought or emotion, strong emotions, and then you always can turn back to watch the thought and watch the emotions. 
and you will find the thought and emotions just uh, uh, like the cloud in the sky and then they are constantly changing and they can disappear, right? So the, the basic level of the thought and emotion are uh, emptiness. So the thief, um, when he does this and then he become, he said, uh, he come, it's very difficult for his stealing because his stealing thought or emotions was gone when he turned back to watch the stealing thought and emotions. So that was the practice. Um, and um, in real life, like everyone here can also use this um, very good um, practice when we get angry or when we upset or stressed, you can, you know, take a rest and uh, turn to watch the anger, watch the stress, watch the worry. We can find basically they are emptiness. They are just something we believe uh, or we, um, some voices, you know, some images. Um, when we watch it, basically they are empty. You cannot grab it. And then you will find that they are constant changing. So when we meditate, if we let go the emotions, let go the thought, and then it basically, it will go, right? But underneath it's also uh, a lot of theories, studies. But um, when you meditate, if you practice like this, you will find basically the thought and the emotions, it's empty. Yeah, and um, the, by the end, the thief gave up his bad habit and turned his mind completely understanding the meaning of Dharma. That's the um, story. And um, next, I would continue um, share Campos' teaching on the true nature of mind. Again, I will skip Campos' teaching as Campos' teaching is in Tibetan. I will go directly um, to the translation. Uh. And the mind's nature is not just only empty, but that it is inherently, it is intrinsically luminous or clear. And uh, this was the main subject of Lord Buddha Shakyamuni's third utterance or turning of the wheel, in fact. And so uh, in sutras that document that, such as the King of Samadhi Sutra, it states the empty form or image of the moon cannot be grasped because it is non-existent. Um, so it is reference to um, appearance that appears but is empty in nature, but yet it still appears. So that is what is meant by luminous. Um, Inasmuch that the mind's nature is empty and does not exist, it appears. Um, inherently as, as a state of luminosity or cognizance, that which can be apprehended uh, to be like uh, the form of the moon reflected in water, to be like um, the image of a rainbow reflected in space. Although it is appearing, its nature is empty. And so just like that, we understand mind's nature to be the non-duality of emptiness and appearance, appearance and emptiness. And so when practicing as a contemplative to meditate in this way, then one should consider whatever pointing out instructions have been received from one's masters and practice accordingly. And if you do so, then you have every possibility to become like the greatest masters of India and Tibet, who became masters, who became uh, great adepts um, as monastics, as lay men and women, whatever the case may be, by realizing mind's nature to be empty and appearing, but that appearances are all empty and that this is 
inseparable non-duality, then all suffering of samsara will be put to rest. So um, Kampo said in his video, the mind nature is not just empty. It inherently is tranquilly luminous, uh, clear, and this is the main subject of Buddha Shakyamuni's the third turning the wheel. So in sutra document such as the King of Samadhi Sutra, it states the empty form or the image of the moon cannot be grasped because it is not existent. So it is references to the appearance, that appearance that is empty in the nature, but yet still appears. It's like rainbow. When we see the rainbow, it appears, but it's empty. Nobody want to grasp rainbow as well. So that is made by luminous. That is much that the mind nature is empty and it does not exist but it appears apparently as the state of luminosity. That which can be like the form of the moon reflect in water to be like the image of the rainbow reflected in the space. Although it is appearing and its nature is empty, just like that. So we understand the mind's nature to be non-duality of emptiness and appears is emptiness. So Kampo said when practicing is contemplative to meditate this way, um, once consider whatever point out instructions received from the master and practice accordingly, then uh, we finally can realize the nature of the mind. And then by realizing mind nature to be empty, appearing, but the appearance are empty, this is inseparable, not duality, then all the suffering of sansara will put to rest. So I will not cover analytical meditation in this session. So we'll go um, back to review a few slides um, from the previous sessions. So um, the stage of realization of emptiness. So Kampo said, um, when we have done through the analytical meditation, we cannot say we understand absolute emptiness. So we cannot say we have realized the genuine nature of emptiness, but this is approximate understanding the emptiness. It's like stairs. Without staircase, one cannot get to the top of the building. This is to accomplish the approximate understanding of the emptiness. It is relative understanding. This is a staircase that will lead us to fully qualified realization of emptiness. So we need study we need um, those analytical meditation, and then we can understand uh, approximate emptiness. And then we can use this um, approximate understanding can lead us to absolute emptiness. So it is very important to follow the teacher. Um, and it's very important to study the text. We need to rely on the master to explain the inner meaning, rely on the qualified teacher, explain the subtle meaning and oral instruction from the lineage. So Kampo said, it's like if we want to learn driving, so we need a coach. So we, if we want to understand the Buddhist teaching, especially the truth of emptiness, and the nature of mind. So we need to follow a qualified guru. So what is the qualified guru? Uh, we have covered um, in our book study, the word of my perfect teacher. 
So this is the um, a path of realizing the nature of mind from a Tibetan Buddhism point of view. Um, as you can see in the bottom, this is the preliminary um, practice of the great perfection. Um, it covers the book study, uh, which is the word of my perfect teacher. Um, in Meetup, um, you can enroll this book study every Sunday, um, 7 p.m. And we also have analytical meditation. Um, it's available on YouTube. So in this preliminaries, it will cover outer preliminary, which is the common with other lineages, um, and inner preliminaries, which is um, special uh, from all lineage. Um, from this study, we can um, cultivate our renunciation and bodhicitta. In the meantime, um, from this study, we can accumulate the merit um, to purify the negative karma. And then um, after this study, which um, take for a few years, and then we can um, practice um, shamatha and vipassana. So um, we, based on this view, uh, we practice shamatha and vipassana. Um, and then it will help us to um, make big progress um, with our meditation. And uh, when the time we practice emptiness, uh, we generate the wisdom. Um, I mean, it's not generate, generate, just that you uh, from experiential level and you will um, emerge the wisdom. It's not do it, it's just the automatically appear. Uh, you understand yourself more you understand this whole reality more. And um, uh, continual practice, you will um, receive the point out instructions from the guru, and then you will um, realizing the nature of mind. It also have um, a lot of levels. Um, after you start um, realizing the nature of mind, uh, you have to continue practice and um, stabilizing the realization of the nature of mind. And um, I also wanna cover, um, like currently everyone is practice mindfulness. So what is mindfulness um, related um, to um, the realizing the nature of mind? Mindfulness, as you can see, um, it is coming from the shamatha practice. Shamatha is um, by the simple way um, is like calm down the mind. It's not, it's not like the mind not that busy, you know, um, always wandering here and there. You can, um, you know, be calm down. And um, um, after all, um, calm down our mind. And then we can, you know, look into our mind to uh, realize the nature of mind. So shamatha practice um, is part of the emptiness practice. So mindfulness is just a, a small part of shamatha practice, but they are different because for here, the shamatha practice is based on the preliminary um, of great perfection practice they already um, have renunciation and bodhicitta. So when you practice shamatha, you are um, easy to make big progress. But if you don't have this foundation, you just uh, jump in to uh, practice mindfulness. It's like watch your breath, watch sensation. Um, sure, it also has some benefit for your mind and the body, but um, you have you will have to maintain um, the practice because you don't have this foundation. You don't know the root cause. Like normally we say, um, please, um, you don't need to make judgment or you don't um, let go of the future, let go of the past. Um, so all this um, non-dualistic. Um, thinking, 
So um, all this uh, mindfulness practice, basically they have deep meanings from Buddhist point of view. But if you don't understand um, the strength when you practice mindfulness, were not that strong, it will make you uh, need like more time and effort um, and to maintain the, um, this um, mindfulness practice in order to get the benefit from it. Next, I would like to introduce um, every Sunday, 7 p.m. Um, meetup teachings for um, Tibetan Buddhism book study, The Word of My Perfect Teacher. This is a um, guide to preliminary um, practice from the great perfection. The textbook is written by great social master, Pachurin Bojie, and interpreted by Campus Ragi. And Pak Churin Bochir listened this teaching from his master um, 25 times. And he recorded uh, his master's teaching as the original. He didn't add anything. He didn't take out anything. For Buddhism study, especially uh, for the text written by the um, masters, um, enlightened beings, um, we cannot, we should not add or take out the content. So it is important to receive um, original text teachings and these teachings are carry great power, um, carry great blessing. Um, the great perfection, Dzogchen, is um, profound Dharma directly resulting in enlightenment through the direct mind pointing method. And this book is very, very important um, for Tibetan Buddhism study. So with the book teaching, Kampo said, um, in our current study of preliminary of great perfection, everyone is also required to participate the actual practice of meditation. Mainly that we will meditate on is based on Longchen Pass preliminary practice instructions of finding the comfort and ease in the um, nature of mind. There are totally 19 for sessions um, is available on YouTube. Um, if you are interested, please um, follow the session. If you don't have time to attend, you know, personally on online teachings, you can always um, go to YouTube and listen to the um, guided analytical meditation. They are covering the same content. Um, next is q and I'm not going to cover the q and here. And then I think um, we covered all the content for this um, session. And um, thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>